Hey guys, I've got a really cool ICF pool and architectural concrete pour coming to you today. All right, 5 a.m. Uh, at the Shaw job. We are going to pour about 85 yards here starting in about 30 minutes. I can hear the pump truck rolling, rolling up the highway, up the hill. So, uh, yeah, if uh, I'm going to keep showing you guys how to uh, build ICF pools on here and uh, at times... I'll show you the real simple ones that you can DIY and other times I'm going to show you these really crazy complex ones but uh I probably only slept two hours last night so even I am not used to uh the the pucker factor on some of these pools so uh, if you're going to do some of them it's uh it's it's pretty stressful okay guys this pool has a subterranean pool equipment room that's going to have a cabana up on top of it uh, on the pool deck and I built this house back in 2018 and the architects and I came up with a way to do a form liner on my gates forms with number four rough sawn pine like you might see someone use for roof decking. And we're able to just cut it up into different dimensions that add up to the right spacing between my ties. And it makes a really cool board form look which is really popular right now without using the form liners because I hate, hate, hate seams. And this was a great way to skin that cake. Okay, so I will get into all the three dimensions of this, uh, this space and this pool a little bit later. But as you can see, we're using the cone ties. These are Gates cam lock ties. And we're using the cones on this wall because this wall will actually be completely buried. Once we pour it, um, will we'll, we'll not show. But you can kind of see over here the board form that we're doing. This is just a liner. We're actually using real rough sawn pine number four grade because it doesn't really matter. We're just trying to make it look cool. And uh, it's gonna match all the, uh, all the other concrete that I'll show you in a second on this, uh, on this awesome house. So um, anyway, yeah, we're getting this thing ready to pour. We're gonna pour it at 5.30 in the morning in a couple days and I'll shoot the video. We're gonna pour, instead of using fast foot along here, we're gonna put a, uh, we're gonna dig that, um, that's, that, that ground out there square and do a monolithic edge so our equipment can sit up on a ledge all of our equipment will have an autofill coming out of the catch basin and then all of our uh, heaters, our pumps and everything will sit right here and just feed back into the pool. We'll have access to almost all of our plumbing. Okay, fast forward to right after we stripped it and you can see what an absolutely cool board form look we are able to create this way. All right guys, I wanted to take a second real quick while we're pouring to talk about uh, the mix. Everybody's always asking me what we use. The mix is nothing special. We used to put Zypex in the mud to waterproof it, but now that we're using um, eco finish, the epoxies are designed to bond to basically pure concrete. So what we're using is an R3500, which is a river sand. The R is for river sand because it's more flowable for the pump. Not really, you can use lime sand if your pump guy's comfortable with it, but uh, making your pump driver happy is everything because our John Martin's one of the most talented pump guys probably in the country. And uh, we, we defer to him on what's going to pump nice. So what we're doing right now, as you can probably see, is I'm just plugging up the wall. The catch basin's over here. My boys are working on that. And I'm just, I'm just pouring about a foot. It's actually stacking about a foot up in the wall. We're just plugging it up. And we'll keep moving around in the pool and in the wall to keep from having any cold joints either place. Just kind of like a cinnamon roll, just a spiral up and in. So that's kind of what we're doing, but we're just using an R3500 mix with a four inch slump. Don't let your concrete guys get it too wet. It doesn't make a stronger mix. So anyway, we'll keep showing you what we got. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the time lapse and what we're doing here. Like I said in the clip before, we used, uh, we're using an R3500, um, just a regular wall mix. Um, the first two truckloads, pretty careful not to get any in the wall uh, behind us there on the on the uh, board form because it is a uh, it's non-colored and it has a one percent calcium just to really firm up around those monopore legs from fast foot because we're going to be putting so much weight you can see some of the wall core is 12 inches on this pool and that's just a lot of weight to ask those legs to support which they do really well but um, we really like to uh, try to get that bottom bottom edge to firm up again we time everything really well to not get any cold joints but what we're doing here though is just working our way around the perimeter of the pool making sure we plug in up the uh, the bottom <clears throat> where the concrete can spill out and then we will 
quickly hit once we're out of the uh, calcium concrete will quickly buzz around in the wall and in the floor and vibrate it into where we have a good uh, mechanical mi mix and bond with the concrete that's going to firm up quicker so you don't get any cold joints even though your concrete is hard you know well before you're done with the pool um, the, the concrete of those in, those in those first two trucks will be very hard um, after those first two trucks we mixed one bag per yard of, uh, of a color because when we did the house we darkened all of the uh, board form walls just a little bit so they didn't totally blend in with the uh, flat work that would uh, abut them so that's kind of what that, that was the goal of this pour you can see the boys work in the bottom but you see how they kind of worked up the slope and that is again just to keep those cold joints from <clears throat> manifesting they also we do a quick pour around the wall and if you know much about concrete guys and wall guys I mean the goal is to move as little as possible typically because it's just easier but you you get cold joints you get these little sloped uh, cold joints in the in the wall and those aren't great for a pool obviously for a lot of reasons it's a weak point it's a point that could let water seepage get through and our goal on these mono pours is to keep absolutely zero cold joints which we're pretty good at doing it's timing it's concrete mix because if everything's too wet you uh you won't be able to continue vertically so that's why you'll hear me talk about a lot about four inch slump being your your ideal it's flowable but it's also stackable if you get up to like a six like a lot of concrete guys like because it's so workable you're going to be a weaker concrete and it's also going to be so wet it's going to be very hard to get it to stack when you don't have a footer to stack it on you know these mono pours really need um, your ideal mix and, and a four slump is actually stronger than a six typically um, the the drier the mix that you pour the higher the psi once it's cured you can see here now the boys are uh, topping off the wall and I mean you know they just finished the concrete that's all wet and uh, everything is uh, kind of comes together all in one piece um, once they get all this done they move over to the uh, the board form wall and we pour that and everything turned out great as you'll see at the end of this pour um, at the end of the pool but um, we were very very happy like obviously we had to start at 5 30 this time of year the concrete plants are so busy with so many guys trying to keep everybody happy the fact that they're willing to uh, bring everybody in at 4 a.m. to have everything set up and ready for us by by 5 30 and uh, again you know next week's video I'm gonna be uh, going to uh, Dolphin Island to fix our Ida damage and I had to leave after this pour and drive 13 hours with a skid steer so uh, you know it was very nice of roast ready mix to do all that for us um, this is a I'm gonna be doing a home tour on this whole house pretty soon but I wanted to kind of show you something from this drone video real quick as I go up you're gonna see the roof line and it's a really cool roof it's called a barrage Bermuda panel it's a uh, standing seam metal roof uh, but it runs horizontally um, instead of running down the fall lines but uh, Archifex Studios in Springfield Missouri actually organized or designed this house and one of the cool little features are, is the homeowners were from uh, Boston and San Francisco respectively and he met her while he was at Stanford Medical School and so they kind of incorporated that story into the house because as you'll see the weird angle of the house it's actually pointing at San Francisco and at Boston and uh, and it comes together in this uh, suburban neighborhood in Missouri and it's just kind of a part of their story it's very cool all right guys we got 90 yards down it's about 9 45 in the morning so we're pretty much done for the day this will cure out tonight and uh, we will strip the forms on the uh, board form tomorrow I'll bring you I'll kind of show you the finished product on that and then uh, we'll start getting this stuff ready to hardy back get it ready for our new uh, our new version of the uh, eco finish substrate which I'm going to show you guys a lot in the next couple weeks as we start getting all the equipment rounded up but uh, I'm headed for Dolphin Island tonight that'll be the next video is uh, Ida damage and all the stuff I got to do down there but uh, we're gonna wrap this up and start packing See you guys next time.